This is Retro Sports Radio. Visit RetroSeasons.com for more sports history. The Minnesota Twins faced the Kansas City Royals for a Friday night game at Royals Stadium on October 1st, 1976. Minnesota was in third place in the AL West with an 82-77 and record under manager Gene Mock in his first season with the Twins. Kansas City was managed by Whitey Herzog, and they were the 1976 AL West champs, having just clinched the division one night earlier with a shutout win by Larry Gurra over the A's. This audio recording is from the Kansas City radio broadcast featuring announcers Denny Matthews and Fred White. Holding to the runner. Doug's pitch is high. One ball, one strike. The Twins 
Cubs have played good ball against the West. They have won 48. They've lost 39. So it's in their own division. They've been tough. Throw to first, the runner back. Royals shooting for win number 91 tonight. The runner goes. The pitch to Carew. Bouncing ball. Base hit left field. Slowly around second. Puts on the brakes. Poquette throws behind him. And he gets back to second base safely. So Rod Carew bounces one between Brett and Pontek. And the Twins have two aboard one out. And up comes Lyman Bostock. Bostock, more than any other Minnesota Twin, tough on the Royals. 18 hits. Nine RBIs. He has been a terror against the Royals, and especially in Minnesota. So it's slowly at second base, Rod Carew at first. Both with bouncing ball opposite field hit. Bostock, grab ball to Pontek, looks like a double play. Right out. He'd like to stay on with the Indians. But as the Indians wind up their best season in years, Robinson remains without a contract. Robinson will not play next year, and the Indians reportedly have offered him $80,000 just to manage. That's a loss of about $100,000 from his reported salary as a player manager. Robinson claims money is not the issue, but he declines to specify just what the key problem is. Taking a look at tonight's Major League scorecard, of course, we mentioned earlier that doubleheader between the Yankees and Indians was rained out, scheduled in New York. A lot of rain here on the East Coast. Another rain out also, St. Louis at Pittsburgh has no bearing whatsoever on the divisional races. It boils down to Kansas City winning it tonight to ramp up the West in the American League. If they don't, and Oakland should win them, well, it just gets tightened up a little bit more. However, we should point out that Kansas City has least tied for the Western Division crown of the American League. If they should end up in the tie, then naturally there would be a playoff between the Royals and the A's to decide who is going to win the West. Other games in the American League, Boston leads Baltimore 1-0. That's after three innings of play. Chicago is scheduled at Texas. Now going for the White Sox. His record is 3-1. Umbarger is going for Texas. His record is 10 and 12. Minnesota is at Kansas City in our game here tonight. And Detroit is at Milwaukee, Hiller, and Trappers. We go to the bottom of the first, no score. The man trying to prevent the Royals from nailing down their first Western Division title is 27 year old right hander Dave Gold. Dave is 6 4, weighs 210. He is 1-2 against the Royals this year. He has pitched better than that in his career. Five wins and three losses against the Royals. He won't beat the Royals in Minnesota back on May the 22nd, 5-3. It was a complete game, and he allowed only three hits and a run in the first eight innings. And then allowed two runs in the ninth, but he was very much in command. And then the Royals and Alfred Morris beat both 1-0 in 10 innings in Minnesota. beating Gold here 4-2 on August the 4th as the Royals got three runs in the first. So as you can see, Gold 1-2 against the Royals, but he's been much tougher than his record would indicate. Now Pochett leads off and takes the breaking ball low, ball one. Tom hitting 301, two homers, 33 RBIs. He's hitting 294 against the Twins. Now ball Leader in doubles with 40. The Twins 
will play in the to pull Poitras. Now for Chad Burns, nobody out. Now for Chad you can hear the crowd, they are very much up for this ball game. No stepping off the rubber, who just stepped out. Rod Carew, the first baseman, holding Tom Foket close. And Tom very safely draws the throw and he's carried back. Royals trying to win the first Major League Baseball title in 21 years of big league play here in Kansas City. The thing is, it was found in only the eighth year of existing quarter oil. Otis bumping a bus, they blow it inside, ball one. Beautiful night for baseball, the temperature in the 80s. You wouldn't expect an 80 degree night on October the 1st. No wind at all, the flags are not the ball in left or left. That is the only whip object in this ballpark. Everybody is up for this one. Dolph again steps off. Otis again steps out. And Tom Foquette resting on first. 1-0 oh to count on Amos Otis. The Clems two hits from the first, but a double play ended. And now Foquette will lead off single. Pitch out, nothing happening. Ball two, 2-0. with 40 doubles has established the Royals record. McCray and Mayberry last year had 38 doubles. Amos broke his bat looper out for the second base but it makes the catch. So Amos jabs with the pitch and breaking his bat, it's a left pop up to Randall. A one out and George Grubb coming up. The fans are still coming in. This place will be packed. Time for get it first, one away. The six to Brett. Breaking ball is low. Ball one. pitcher, not at all. He'll move the ball in and out. The pitch to George Brett, hit hard. Off the glove of the shortstop, all the way in and right safe. And the two line with one out. It'll be a base hit for George Brett, a hot play. Royce Wally, the shortstop, going to his right. Got his glove on the ball to knock it down, the back of the ball. He takes a strike from goal going one. So the hits leave it up at two apiece. The Royals, the same opportunity, presented the Twins in the top half of the first. That is, runners at first and second, one out. In that situation, Bostock grounded into a double play. Now we'll see about Al McCray. the pitching rubber trying to first of all dislodge some mud from between his pipes. At first he was kicking at the dirt in front of the rubber to get it to his liking. Now Dave's taking a moment to rub a wrinkle in a new ball. So he's in no hurry. No balls and a strike. Runners at first and second one away. Royals batting in the bottom of the first. No score. Here's the pitch. McCray tried to get the bat back, but foul fifth in the count on two. Don't move the next in on McCray's hand. No balls, two strikes on Hal McCray. Back trying 
to become the first Royals player to win the batting title. Bouncing ball to third, might be a double play, the second base down, the first base, out at first, and oh my goodness, this left hit Bob Rondo out at second base. And Rondo lifting off, he almost cut him in half with a rolling body block. So are the Royals serious about winning tonight? Ask Bob Rondo as he went back to the Minnesota dugout. with a double play. Two hits, no runs, a man left, and after one, no score. Washington newspaper, the Star, quotes an attorney who handles some pro basketball contracts as being angry over the way a couple of teams announced the term. The attorney, Donald Dell, represented John Lucas, who signed with the Houston Rockets, and Adrian Dantley, who went with the Buffalo Braves. According to Dell, Lucas actually got a seven-year contract from Houston calling for a total of one and one-half million dollars. Houston announced it as a multi-year fact for, for $850,000. And Dell says Buffalo announced that least pay us $500,000 for five years, but actually it will be $1,100,000 for seven seasons. Well, not too bad there. It appears as though the players came out on top. Uh, after all, our pay raise was only 4.83%. We had nothing to say about it. Texas Rangers South Paul Fritz Peterson is recovering from surgery he underwent at Englewood California Hospital two days ago to repair a torn muscle in his left shoulder. The 34-year-old Peterson, a 20-game winner with the Yankees in 1970, hasn't pitched for the Rangers since June 19th. We go to the second inning, no score. That includes Weiniger, Larry Heisel, and Dan Ford will be coming up against Doug Bird. Weiniger, the switch hitting rookie catcher, carries an average of 260 into the ballgame. Bush has 10 homers, 69 RBIs. Doug allowed two singles in the first. Bostock grounded into the double play. And Weininger takes a strike on one. In the ballgame tomorrow afternoon, and remember it's an afternoon game, the 0-1 pitch to Weininger, breaking ball inside, one and one. Game time is 1.30. Dennis Weiner pitches against Jim Hughes. And then on Sunday afternoon, Paul Splitorf or Al Fitzmaurice will go against Bill Singer. Weininger started to go, held up in time, ball two, two and one. Royals have done very well against the Twins, especially here at Royal Stadium. Twins here. They have five victories. A little bit low, ball three, three and one. Royals are ten and five against the Twins overall. Three balls and one strike on the catcher, Butch Weidinger. Back comes Doug Bird, ground ball, White to his left, good pickup, over the first. Good swing, and Larry just turns and walks back to the dugout. 
number 15. Now, two away, here's Dan Ford. Ford. Ford's average is 268. Dan has 20 home runs, 86 RBIs. Doug in the pitch. Fastball in on his hands and he fouls it away. The Royals should treat Danny Ford very kindly. Dan Ford has been a one-man wrecking crew against the Oakland A's this year. And in several games, Dan Ford has almost single-handedly beaten the A's. He has just worn out the Oakland pitching staff. So the Royals should be very grateful. And the 0-1 pitch. High fly ball. Well hit. Deep right center. Otis going back. A way back to the wall. He's got it. So Dan Ford, the man who has bedeviled the A's. He has seven home runs against the Oakland staff. Almost gets it out of Royal Stadium. But Otis ran it down in deep right center. In the inning, no hit, no run. And nobody left. We go to the bottom of the second. Royals nothing, Twins nothing. All the Kansas City Royals can clinch the American League West Championship tonight in their home game against the Minnesota Twins. A victory by the Royals or a loss by Oakland to California would do the trick. Now we got a call from Freddie White with the Kansas City Royals Baseball Network, and he informed us that tomorrow's game has been moved up to 2.15. Of course, this is to accommodate television. That is only if the uh, pennant race is necessary. However, should uh, Oakland clinch tonight, I don't imagine that that game would be moved up at all, seeing as how it would be meaningless. However, during our uh, college football doubleheader tomorrow, we will be passing these scores along to you. Of course, a reminder that uh, that big doubleheader tomorrow, UCLA at Ohio State, that starts at 125 Eastern Daylight Time. And then Alabama at Georgia, quite a big game there in the Southeastern Conference. That game has started at 4.35 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time to be carried over most of these AFRGF stations. No score. Royals come to that in the bottom of the second inning. The Twins, no run, two singles. The Royals, no run, two singles. John Mayberry, Al Collins, and John Wathen in that order. That places him fifth in the American League. John has 13 home runs. His average 235. Dave Gold rocks and deals. Fight it on the outside corner, 0 1. John, in years past, has been very well against the Twins. He's hitting 250 this year. A little tap up along the first baseline. Picked up by Rob Carew right at the bag for the out. And there's one guy. Now 
out in Oakland on Wednesday night, and he's in there tonight. Ricky Wall is sitting in the right field. Dan Ford coming in. He's there to make the catch. And the Royals go quickly and quietly in the bottom of the second. And after two, Royals nothing, Minnesota nothing. Superstar Dick Allen is expected to be back in uniform tonight with the National League East leading Philadelphia Phillies host the New York Mets. And of course, as we mentioned earlier in Pittsburgh, Danny Murtaugh has announced his retirement and for the fourth time. And Danny is stepping down along with Joe Brown, who retired a couple of days ago. Let's check out the National League scorecard for you right now. And in that New York-Philadelphia game, Philly is leading 1-0 after three innings to play. Jerry Kuzman going for the New York Mets and Tom Underwood for the Philadelphia Phillies. Earlier in the day, Chicago defeated Montreal 3-1. Bill Baum, the winner, his record now 9-13. And, and Sam House was the loser. His record drops to 8-13. St. Louis at Pittsburgh was rained down. Atlanta at Cincinnati, the big red machine, leads the Braves 2-1 after two and one half innings of play. Later starts San Francisco at Houston and San Diego at Los Angeles.
Braves President Chad Turner says he's optimistic Bristol will do better next year. Bristol was named Braves manager last October. Cleveland Indians player manager Frank Robinson has reportedly gotten an offer to return next year. The Cleveland Plain Dealer says Robinson has been offered $80,000 to come back as manager only. That's a big gut from the $200,000 Robinson reportedly makes this year. The Major League's first black manager reportedly will talk to deal over with his agents sometime today, which is Friday. And uh, no decision yet, old Frank, as to whether he is going to accept that offer or not to return as manager only of the Cleveland Indians for 80000 a year. The bottom of the third, it'll be Fred Potek and then Frank White. The 8-9 hitters and back to the leadoff man, Tom Poquette for the Royals. Potek up for the first time in the ballgame, hitting 243 with a home run and 43 RBIs. He's driven in seven against the Twins. Although he hasn't hit him that well, his average only 194 against Minnesota pitching, but he's had hits that have counted. Potek, a right-handed batter. Royal shortstop. Both the first bumps up when the Royals took the field tonight. They came out through a human tunnel of Royal Lancers that included Mr. and Mrs. Ewing Kopp and the Royal Owners. And the Royals were built up when they hit the field tonight. They want to end it here. First pitch in from Gold. Inside, ball one. Gold throws a running fastball, a knuckle curve, a little slider. Has a funny weaving motion when he delivers the pitch to Botek as a strike and it's even a one and one. Gold wobbles his head and his body side to side. Kind of a distracting motion. Now the crowd starting to clapping here in Royal Stadium. A great crowd on hand. They want to see the Royals get going offensively the fifth. One and miss by Botek. He's in the hole one and two. Carl and Fisk is homered for the Red Sox in the fourth with nobody on his 17th. Baltimore and Boston are tied 2-2. Don't forget tomorrow, game time, 1-20. Contact foul, tips a bit, and it's 1-2. The so Whitey Herzog show at 1 o'clock tomorrow here on the Royal Network. And tonight we'd like to welcome once again the Armed Forces Network. They've joined up with the Royals Network tonight. Some 300 stations strong listening in around the world as the Royals try to nail down the crown in the American League West here tonight. A win for the Royals would do it, barring that. The Royals should lose. If the A's would lose tonight, it would be over. The fifth. Foul tipped again by Pontek, and the count remains one and two. But the Royals don't want to do it. By letting the Angels beat the A's on the West Coast tonight, that's banana against Blue, what they want. There's the winner, right here. And to take it to the clubhouse, knowing that it's over. Botek giving goals to battle as we open the bottom of the third. One and two, put up their fouling pitches off. The outfield straight away, the pitch. Way outside, breaking pitch, and it's two and two. Frank White in the odd deck circle, circle studying goals. For in center field, Bostock very shallow the pitch. Low and inside and a full count, three and two. Bostock, of course, a good man to have aboard to start an inning with that great base running ability. He has stolen 51 bases, just one shy of Amos Oda's team record. Three and two to Bostock and Gold rubbing the baseball. Now let's send a Weininger for a sign. Here comes the pitch to Bostock. Little tap, towards the mound, and goes past it. Other hands to first, there's one away. Botek tried to check your swing, and rolled up, pitcher to the first baseman. One out, nobody on to Frank White. Number 20. Here's a Royals radio. Frank White steps in, Frank getting 231 with a couple of homers. Goals ready and delivered. And it's a strike. Why hitting the twins well? He's hitting 289 against Minnesota. Right handed batter halfway up in the batter's box. The pitch. Ground ball, chopper towards the shortstop. Paul he has it. Overhand to first. And there are two men out. White down short to first. And 
Golson now retired six in a row. Boy, these teams following identical patterns. Each team threatened in the first with two singles. Each team out on a double play. Each team down one, two, three in the second. Nobody has reached yet in the third. Here's Boquette who singled and docked the ball game for the Royals. Tom at 304. Left handed batter. Good off the field hitter and they're playing him straight away. The pitch. He bunts. Back to the mound, but goes off intercept. Underhands to first and the inning's over. Boquette tried to drag it past the mound and couldn't get us there. So he's down one three and that does it. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. We'll go to the fourth, the Royal nothing and the Twins nothing. All the controversy is still raging over the decision by the referee and two judges that gave Muhammad Ali a narrow victory over Ken Norton in their title fight Tuesday night in New York. Sports riders were shown film clips of the pivotal 15th round, which all three officials gave to Ali. The film shows that Muhammad threw three times as many punches as his opponent in the final round. However, most of these did not land. So uh, Kenny Narn's assessment of the referee and the judge's decision apparently, uh, decision rather, apparently is true. That Muhammad threw a lot of punches, but all of them only caught air. Well, after a night of thunder and lightning, the second round of the $135,000 Sahara Invitational got underway in the rain today, but the inclement weather wasn't expected to cause any delay in play. It's not that heavy, said PGA spokesman Tom Place. We'll keep playing unless it becomes unplayable, but the scores might be a little higher today. The golfers teed off at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Should have more on that later on. We go to the fourth inning scoreless, the hits even at two apiece. For Minnesota, it'll be Smalley, Carew, and Bostock, the number two, three, and four hitters. Smalley, a switch hitter, single his first time up, batting left-handed against Doug Bird. His average, 259. The outfield playing him to hit the opposite way. As an extreme opposite field hitter, in fact, he gets one foul back up. Fine home plate, one strike. We've been informed that they are selling standing room only tickets here at Royal Stadium now. And out on the hill behind left field, a great army of fans lined up watching this game, sitting way up by the interstate highway. One strike pitch to Smalley. Breaking stuff, miss. One and one. Otis, the center fielder, way over in left. Poquette, very shallow near the line in left. Gallant, the right fielder, well off the line against the left-handed batter. Here's the 1-1 pitch from Bird. Chop towards Mayberry up the first base line. John has it. He's going to take the play himself as one away. Foley out to the first baseman and assistant. And here comes Rod Carew, who singled his first time up. Rod Carew. That lifted his average to 327. Carew, a left-handed batter. With nine home runs, 89 RBIs. Now has 16 hits against the Royals this year and 49 times at the plate. And they play Carew, too, as an opposite field hitter. But has shortened up at third. He's about a fifth deep, so pretty well off the line. The pitch. Chopper up the first base line. Maybe he has it in clear territory and tips on the bag. There are two away. Carew after first first pitch round out. Two out, nobody on. The Lyman Bostock, who grounded into a double play his first time up. White Carew, a left-handed batter and an the field hitter. Bostock at 324 now. Bird set. Here's the pitch. Takes the ball up high. They get a free wire whip from Weiss's cheese soup. Just then two flattened Weiss's cheese soup wrappers. And a quarter for handling the whip. Box 610 leaves some of the good. The pitch to Bostock. Ground ball off his foot. It's a foul ball. And the count now one ball, one strike. Bostock limping around on plate. Hammered himself in the foot where that was. A double header in New York rained out tonight. Cleveland and the Yankees. Leading or rather tied with Boston, 2-2 after four. Fifth homer tied it. Chicago and Texas, nothing, nothing after one. Detroit and Milwaukee, nothing, nothing after two. California at Oakland later. Tanana against Blue. 
Here we have two out. The top of the fourth, no score. Pop dog. Flames and pop foul. Back behind the plate. Lawson to the barrier, no play. And the count remains one and two. St. Louis to Pittsburgh rained out. Chicago beat Montreal 3-1. Bottom the winner is winner Shannon out the loser. Monday got his 32nd homer for the Cubs. Reds lead the Braves to the one after three. The Mets and the Phillies won one. The bottom of the fourth. San Francisco and Houston scored us after one. And San Diego and Los Angeles later. One ball, two strikes, and the pitch from Bird to Bostock. Inside, flipping. And a count even two and two, Bostock. Had to flatten out to get out of the way of that one. Then he throws you in the first, Bostock Carew of the Twins, McRae and Brett of the Royals, embroiled in a red hot batting race for the American League Championship. Nobody's really worried about that on the Royals ball club. 2 2. Round ball at Pontiac. Fred has it. A throwing, and the inning's over. Bostock out, good to first. Another 1 2 3 inning for Doug Bird. He's retired 10 in a row. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. We go to the bottom of the fourth. The Royals now think the plan for Angelo Dundee isn't shocked by Muhammad Ali's retirement announcement, but says when he hears it from Ali, he'll believe it. Dundee asked, with all the things I've been through with Ali, how could I be shocked at anything? Dundee feels that if Ali cannot give 100% of himself, he will retire. As for that he thought it was unusual that Ali would select Stan Bull to make his announcement, and uh, Usual for him to make it without informing his uh, trainer first, Dundee says. Is there anything unusual about Ali? He's just something else. Atlanta Braves manager Dave Bristol has a new two-year contract. Owner Ted Turner feels that Bristol will turn it around for the losing Braves. Turner is very unhappy about the losing season, but is very optimistic about the future. The Braves finished the season this weekend at Cincinnati. They are in last place in the National League West, 31 games behind the champion, Cincinnati Reds. It's the bottom of the fourth in Royal Stadium, a scoreless ball game, and the Royals will send Otis, Curtis McCray, and Dave Gold. The number two, three, and four hitters. Well, we have a moment. We want to say hello to Jim Keeper, who's quite a Royal fan from Muscota, Kansas. He's ill and in research hospital. Jim, we hope you recover in a ring. Also, happy anniversary to Mr. and Mrs. Charles Ford Sr. from Archie, Missouri. Their 60th anniversary today. So happy birthday to Scott Mott. Or Hawk, rather. Scott Mott is the Royal favorite. He was Otis. Here we go to the fourth. Amos Otis steps in. Otis broke his bat in a little looping liner to the second baseman, Bobby Randall, his first time up. Mayo hitting 280 with 18 overs. 86 runs batted in. Amos White had his batter waiting and Gulf delivers. Ball into the dirt, ball one. Boy, what a night in Royal Stadium. It would be a great night for the Royals to put it away. It's warm, around 85 degrees, no wind boy. The hitters will get no help. This is ball two to Amos Otis. Two and oh now. Royal third base coach, Chuck Hiller, is celebrating his 42nd birthday tonight. And I know how he'd like to celebrate it by waving some Royals on by. Well, the Royal coaching staff has been so important this year. 2-0 -oh pitch to Otis. Warm and foul tip. That one got Butch Weininger, the twin catcher on the left foot. Two balls and a strike. The Royal coaches, Chuck Hiller, Steve Forrest, Galen Sisko, Charlie Lau. From the moment they went to spring training in Fort Myers, Florida this spring, have worked and worked and worked and worked and worked. This ball club hungry to win this game here tonight. But Golf has been tough. Then he told you he's been tough all year. Trying to get it started, a scoreless ball game in the bottom of the fourth. Goals the right-hander. Yes, that is the 2-1 pitch. 
Right field on the outside corner. And it's even at two and two. George Bretnett. Here comes the two-two pitch. The inside it hit him. Otis Smith on the left leg. He's aboard with nobody out.
to the first base up by a different way down third to first. Here's Mayberry over one in the ball game. He grabbed it to first base, but Brett now at third with two out. Dave Gold set to stretch the fifth. Ball one to Mayberry. I think Lot Carew's unhappy with Al McRae, but Carew has got a habit of getting back on the bag. The fifth. Mayberry takes ball two. Al Collins would be next. Hey, if you've been around the major leagues as long as Lot Carew has, you have to know that you can't take half the bag. Al McRae has reminded him of that twice this year. the shift against Mayberry. The shortstop volleys over behind the bag in second. Bob Randall, the second baseman out in right field. To an over the count. Gold's keeping the ball away from him. The fifth. Ball three, breaking pitch inside. We're in the fourth in scoreless. Mayberry trying to drive one home right here. John then wheels the bat waiting. Very deep in the batter's box. We'll see if they turn him loose on 3 and or if he's taking. Here's the pitch. He's swinging and he misses the breaking pitch. The count now 3 and 1. Gold flying at the rubber. Mayberry again. Then wheels the bat. Here's the stretch. The fifth. There's a fly ball. Right field. But over near the winding track of Dan Ford. He's got it and the inning's over. Mayberry flies to right. And the Royals come away empty-headed. No runs a hit. It's better a man picked off. No errors and one left. And we'll go to the fifth. The Royals nothing. And the Twins nothing. Capriano Balotero, the Spain, shot a six under four and 67 to take the lead on the first day of the three-day Donald Swaling's golf tournament. Balotero score equal the course record set in 1967 by former Belgian champion Donald Swaling, for whom the tournament is named. The Spaniard was two strokes ahead of Lee Elder of the United States, who shot a four under four and 69. American Curtis Strange carded a two under four and 67. Brian Huggett of Wales posted a four and 73, while John Carmody of France scored a 74, and Tommy Aaron of the United States a 75. Rain interrupted play with Gary Flair of South Africa and Philip Poussin of Belgium, the only two other players in the tournament, two holes out. They will complete the first round on Saturday morning. Carl Yastrzemski became the ninth oldest player to drive in 100 runs in a single season Friday when he drove home Rick Miller with an Enfield single. We move to the fifth in Royal Stadium, a scoreless ball game. The Royals have hit the win three to two, but neither team has punched home a run yet. For the Twins in the fifth, winding to the high school board, number five, six, and seven hitters. Back to the mound, Doug Bird, once again, here's Denny. Hi, Fred. Butch Weidinger retired on a fine play by Frank White, his first time up. Doug Bird now has retired 10 straight. The delivery to the switch hitting Weidinger is over the globe, ball one. Jim McKean, the plate umpire. One ball, no strike, still Weidinger. Back comes Bird in a high drive foul down the right field line. It bangs off the wall, right to Al Collins, and they got one and one. The Minnesota hit singles by Smalley and Rod Carew in the first inning. The Royals have two singles and a double. Inside corner to Weidinger, one and two. to the Minnesota catcher is down and in. Two balls, two strikes. Ball game in a 
the top of the fifth. This is game one of the series. Doug Reddy, the 2-2 pitch to Weininger. Breaking ball, barely missed the inside corner to knees. Full count, three and two. Houston, two to nothing down in Houston. Those two ball clubs finish the season tomorrow. They don't play Sunday. Pops up, foul ground. George Brett with room has the ball in the far way. So Weininger fouls out. And up comes Larry Heisel, who struck out in the second inning. Doug hasn't walked anybody. That's not news. He has two strikeouts. Slightly to full. Doug works to the right hand batter. Fighters foul back to the screen, 0 and 1. A scoreless ball game, top of the fifth. The Royals trying to win it. The 0 1 pitch. The foul ball or the change foul back in the count 0 and 2. The identical pitch with the identical spot that Eisel struck out out of the second. So Doug has his third strike out of the ballgame. He's retired 12 straight. And the batter, Dan Ford. Ford fly out to Amos Otis in very deep right center field, his first strike. Right hand hitter digs in. Nothing, nothing, top of the fifth inning. So quite a duo shaping up between Doug Byrne and Dave Gold. Back ball in on his hands and he pulled it foul, 0-1. We mentioned earlier a ball game that Gold pitched against the Royals in Minnesota. The Royals eventually winning one to nothing in 10 innings back on June the 29th. It took four... Fine plays in the outfield by Hal McRae. And then a sacrifice fly by Fred Pontex to score McRae with the only run of the ballgame. The 0-1 pitch, low and outside. One ball and one strike. So Goltz has lost twice to the Royals this year, and Al Fitzmaurice beat him both times. And I did Doug Bird try to get it done. Pop foul near the Royal dugout. Roth is chasing it, but it's out of play. Back two rows, directly behind the Royal dugout. Pause here for station identification. This is the Royal Baseball Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. and Fred White at Royal Stadium. No score, top of the fifth. Base is empty, two out. One and two, the count to Dan Ford. Doug Bird's pitch to the right-hand batter. Hits the left center field and deep. Back goes Tom Pochette. It's over his head. And one out to the wall. Pochette plays the counter, but by that time, Dan Ford is second with a two-out double. So Dan Ford, the man who we mentioned just Carried on a one-man crusade against the Oakland A's. Is that work against the Royals? And he doubles with two out. And up comes Mike Cubbage, who rolled out to the second baseman his first time up. For Dan Ford, that would be his 24th two-base hit. So Doug had retired a dozen. He had not allowed a runner since the double play in the first. But now Dan Ford hits one in the alley between Pochette and Otis. And Mike Cummings a chance to put the twins out in front. The hits even up a three apiece. 
The pitch to the left-hand batter of an inside ball one. One ball, no strikes on Mike Covey. Mike, a former Ranger, came to the Twins in the first while of the trade. Doug, a backwards lance at second. He steps off the rubber. Dan Ford did not have that big a lead. Nonetheless, Doug chose to step back and start over. One and all on coverage. Royals play Mike straight away. Good breaking ball. The strike and it's one and one. Jim Sunberg. The Texas Rangers find catcher and Homer is first. And Texas has taken a two to one lead over Chicago. Tony Perez is Homer's for Cincinnati. The Reds lead Atlanta 3-1 for Tony Perez, his 19th. One ball, one strike on Mike Covey. Dan Ford at second, two out of the top of the fifth. A scoreless ball game. Doug tried to hit the inside corner and miss. Two balls and a strike. Each team had a scoring opportunity in the first inning. McCray rolled into a double play. Lyman Bostock grounded into a twin killing. Two balls and a strike. Here's the stretch by Doug in the fifth. Ground ball up the middle, but Bostock is behind second. He's got it over the middle area in time. And it's five to tire. Bostock was positioned perfectly. I tell it that it passed the mound towards center field. But Bostock was in front of it. And that's that. So the two out double by Dan Ford. One hit, no runs, and a man left. We go to the bottom of the fifth. No score. Call Yastrzemski became the ninth oldest player to drive in 100 runs in a single season Friday when he drove home Rick Miller with an infield single. Yastrzemski hit a ground ball to Baltimore first baseman Lee May with two outs in the first inning. Baltimore pitcher Dave Pagan missed the first base in taking the throw from May, allowing Yastrzemski to reach safely. Miller raced home from second base on the play. Now, Babe Ruth twice drove in more than 100 runs in a single season after he turned 37 years of age. Others to perform that feat included Ty Cobb, Ernie Banks, Honus Wagner, Minnie Minoso, Hank Aaron, Zach Wheat, and Bob Johnson. Harris Tahoe race book on Friday and saw the New York Yankees and Cincinnati Reds as favorites for the Major League playoffs beginning October 9th. The Reds were made two, three favorites, which means they better would put up $3 to win two. Conversely, the Phillies were listed at 13 to 10, meaning a better would put up $10 to win 13. The Yankees, meanwhile, were listed at 5 to 8, and the Kansas City Royals at 7 to 5. Kansas City is the only team which hasn't clinched a divisional title, but its magic number is down to one. And at the rate they're going tonight, perhaps it will be tomorrow sometime before it's decided as to whether the Kansas City Royals have indeed won the Western Division of the American League. It's not over yet. They're three and a half games ahead of the Oakland A's with three games remaining. But the Oakland A's have four games to play. Now let's get back to Royal Stadium. Coming up, Al Collins rolls back to the pitcher his first time up. No runs, three hits for Twins. No runs, three hits for the Royals. Neither team is there. Gold delivers, breaking ball, rolling outside, ball one. You can imagine the Royals are so eager to get a run. Top foul back and out of play by Al Collins. And they count one and one. Working very methodically. Dave is 14 and 14 with the league, an ERA of 3.34. The 1 1 pitch to Al is down and in, ball two, two and one. Reggie Jackson has just homered for Baltimore in the seventh inning with nobody out, is 27. And Baltimore leading Boston, 4 to 2. Collins this one over the shortstop in the left center for a big six. Now around first, 
for Tiger Banks. Allen looking one over the truck stop right Foley. And the Royals got their leadoff man for it for the third time in five innings. Up comes John Watson, the catcher. John, a fly ball in the right field his first time up. Break 
to scoreless deadlock in the bottom of the fifth. Lawson is second, Montek at third, the fifth to White. Over but low, ball one. Five hits off Dave Gold. Dave hasn't walked anybody. We mentioned earlier he is not an overpowering pitcher. And he hasn't struck out anybody. The 1-0 pitch grounded to the second baseman. They'll go for a double play. It's Crawley is second out to third base. Lawson has to stay at third. Out comes A. Walk. The Minnesota manager. He is pointing toward first base. Rod Carew coming off the bag. And Rod was on the right field side of first base and tried to swipe at Frank White, who was already across the base safely. So they get the fourth shot at second. There are two guns. And here's Michael Judd with Lawson at third and Frank White at first. So two on, two out, no score. Royals batting in the bottom of the fifth. And Tom Pochette has a chance to put the Royals in front. Tommy Sundle in the first inning and then tried to butt his way out in the third. Dave Gold came off the mound to pick off the bunt. Tom was trying to drag it out toward the second baseman, Randall, who was playing deep as he is now. But Tom didn't run it hard enough to get it past Gold. Dave threw him out. Tommy, 33 on the eyes. He takes down low, ball one. This standing room only crowded Royal City and just poised to explode. You could feel electricity in the ballpark 45 minutes before the first pitch was thrown. And certainly now, the 1-0 pitch. He plays and the ball gets away from Lionel and Lawson scores. Lawson scores in the bottom of the fifth.
He was on his feet and then moving back toward his position in center. And then suddenly doubled over and is in pain now, attended to by the Minnesota trainer, Gene Moss, the manager, walking out very slowly. So the Royals have taken a two to nothing lead. It started with a single by Cowan. Lawson bounced into a horse shot. The base hit by Fred Potchek. Frank White bouncing into a horse shot. Lawson going to third. And John to score on the wild pitch. And now the double by Tom Fouquet off the glove of the diving line at Bostock in left center field. And suddenly it's 2 nothing Royals. Hey, I think something bears repeating. We haven't talked about it for a long time. All the talk about rookies of the year, Tom Fouquet has had a lot of consideration, maybe because he's played primarily against right-handed pitching. When you think of the great defensive plays he's turned in, he made 50 that. He's hitting over 300. It's just a darn shame if he gets overlooked. Now in right field, General Nathan, I hope it's not premature. as a fan starting to shot. We're number one. <laughs> well, it's only in the fifth, so we're working on it. Well, we're tied for number one. That counts for something. All right. Meanwhile, in center field, they are still gathered around Lyman Bostock. Dave Gold, the pitcher, continues to stay loose. It would appear that there is a cheering war, if that would be the correct terminology, between the general admission section in left and the general admission fans in right field. popping up here at Royal Stadium. There is a sizable sign held up by fans down the right field line. And the sign very simply says, number one, Royals Western Division champ. It says it all. The Royals are not quite ready to assume that label. But as we said, they certainly have one foot very solidly in the door. And all they have to do now is to maintain their lead, which is 2 nothing in the bottom of the fifth. And they can slam that door behind them and look then to the Yankees, who will be here at Royal Stadium to play the first game of the playoffs one week from tomorrow at noon, Saturday, October the 9th, and then a Sunday night game on October the 10th. Brings up a point tomorrow afternoon. The Royals and the Twins play. That game was originally slated to be played at 7:30 tomorrow night, but it's an afternoon game. It will start at 1:30, or more correctly, 1:20 because of national television. And the pitchers will be Dennis Leonard and Jim Hughes. And then Sunday afternoon, Paul Swinnard or Alfred Morris against Bill Singer, and I think I see Bill Singer loosening in the Twins' bullpen now, so Bill getting ready to pitch here on Sunday, doing his throwing in the bullpen. Lyman Bostock, after getting much attention, is okay. He will stay in the ballgame. Dave Gold continues to throw. Amazonas hits a left center field and deep. That goes Bostock, still going to 
going back to make the catch near the warning track. And that retires the tie. The Royals come up with two runs on three hits. They leave one, and after five, the Royals two, and the Twins nothing. Rookie George Burns, who led in the final rounds of the World and Houston Opens this year, George, and who the second round lead of the $135,000 Sahara Invitational Golf Tournament, with a rain soaked six under par 65, for a 36 hole total of 132. Playing on a day when rare October desert rain showers followed a spectacular night of lightning and thunder, six foot two, 210 pound Burns of Delray Beach, Florida, took a one-shot advantage over second-year pro Bruce Litsky and George Archer, a 1969 Masters champion. Litsky had a 67 while Archer, seeking his first victory in four years, not the 66 for a 133 score. Two shots back at 134 were 46-year-old Don January, 14-year tour veteran Charles Cootie, and Mike McCullough, defending champion Dave Hill, matched Burns to 65, and was three shots back at 135 in a tie with Miller Farber, who had a second round 67. This is the first time I remember it raining here during the Sahara, and a bet of 16 of them, said tournament director John Romero. We got some rain, but not that much, said Burns, who shot an opening round 67. It was not enough to affect my game length this morning. Burns, who took a one-shot lead over Masters champion Ray Floyd into the final round of the World Open at Pinehurst, North Carolina, three weeks ago, and was in front by three strokes with nine holes to go, caught at 7.30 in his round of 32-33 over the far 71 court. We look to the sixth, the Royals lead two to nothing. A fan has jumped out of the stands to drape a banner on the warning track in center field. in center field, but it's too bad he won't be around in the ninth inning list. Hopefully the Royals can attach that sign to the dressing room, number one. Bobby Randall takes the pitch on the inside corner on one. So here we go in the sixth. The Royals, two runs on a half a dozen hits. The Twins, no runs, three hits. Doug Bird ready and deal. Long enough by Bob Randall to count on two. Bob thrown out by Brett in the third inning. He's the number nine hitter, Steve Braun and Roy Smalley to follow. Top of the six. Doug has struck out three. Back he comes. Fastball, one out of this. Down goes Randall. One away. That'll bring up the twin DH. Steve Braun. Steve struck out in the third. Flies to left field in the first inning. Aces empty, one out. Doug started to go into his motion, then stopped. Now he's ready. Butted by Braun, popped up, and that bird makes the catch behind the mound. And now he drops the ball and is retrieved by George Brett. Braun trying to drag the ball past the mound, but popped it up behind the mound. And Doug Bird spreading back at the pitcher's mound to haul it in. So quickly two out. And here is Roy Smalley, the switch hitting shortstop. Roy single in the first, grounded to the first base spin in the fourth. The Smalley one out of two. The line by Doug in the fifth. Swung it in, going on. The magic number is one. A win tonight for the Royals, and there will be no magic number. Line to right field, base hit. Al Collins over quickly to cut it off, and Braun held to a single. And there's Swally, Roy belting the ball into right field. So Swally, two out of three. The batter, Rod Carew. Rod singled in the first, 
Grounded out in the fourth. So Roy Smalley has half of the twin hit. The rhythm starting for the fight now goes back toward the dugout. He apparently would like to do back. Rod Hefting, a new piece of lumber, now will apply the pine tar rag to that bat. to Mayberry in the fourth. The stretch by Doug Bird in the fifth. A half swing and he picked a foul in the count of one one. No balls and one strike on Rod Carew. Doug takes the sign, goes to work and throws a fastball in too tight. and Mark Littell working in the Royals' bullpen. One ball, one strike on Rod Carew. Bouncing ball past the mound. Right to his right has got it. Puts the contact for the fourth shot. And that retires the side. No run, one hit. A man left. The Clips now is stranded three. The Royals come to bat at the bottom of the six. Royals two, Twins nothing. Former PGA Touring Pro Charlie Cypher shot a hole in one Friday and route to a victory in the Medina Bicentennial Open Tournament for Pros in the Northern Ohio area. Cypher carded a three under par 69 over 18 holes at the Wedgwood Country Club. His ace, the sixth in his career, came on the 192-yard 4-3 17th hole. Cypher one of the first black golfing pros is a six iron, and the ball went into the cup on the fly. He won the use of a new car for one year for the A's. It was the first time a hole in one had been recorded in the tournament. Separate at 53 years of age as a pro at the Sleepy Hollow Country Club in Beckersville. He had been uh, on the pro tour for 18 years and occasionally put in PGA events. Well, with the score, the Kansas City Royals lead the Minnesota Twins 2 to nothing. Let's go back to Royal Stadium in Kansas City for the bottom half of the sixth inning. Royals 2, Minnesota nothing. Bottom of the sixth. Royals 2 runs, six hits, no errors. Minnesota, no runs, four hits, and no errors. It'll be George Brett, Al McCray, and John Mayberry. In the fifth, single by Cowan and Freddie Pondek, a couple of points out. George, the first run coming across on a wild pitch. And then a triple by Tom Pochette off the glove of Lyman Mostock to score Frank White. The pitch to George Brett is high, ball one. George, an infield single in the first. He doubled down the left field line in the fourth. Outside, ball two, two out. Gold rocks the deal. Way outside, ball three. So Dave, who hasn't walked anybody, but he's hit a batter, in danger of walking the Royals' leadoff man. Three times the Royals have placed their leadoff men aboard. George takes ball four. baseman Mike Cubby. His last time up there. One on, nobody out. Two nothing Royals in the bottom of the sixth. There goes Brett. The pitch to McCray is followed back and out of play. Al trying to plug the gap between the first baseman Rod Carew 
And the second baseman, Bobby Randall. Randall is going over to cover second base, so you can imagine with Carew tied up with the runner. And Randall breaking for the bag how much room there was between the two for Hal McCray. But Hal fouled it off in the count on one. It's a whipper toward short center. That goes Bob Randall, the second baseman, to tuck it away. So Hal McCray is out, one away. That will pause for station identification. This is the Royal Baseball Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service.
down three and two, and now Bernie has to make a pitch. We said he hasn't walked anyone. He's seldom well. Only 30 men all year in 197 innings. So the odds are that Dan Ford is going to get a pitch you'll have to swing at. 30 leading signs. The pitch. He walked him. Ball four and the base is loaded. Position with one out. The lead runner turns, and Mike Kelly did it for the play. He has grounded out twice. Out now. Minnesota three, the Royals two. Steve Mangori out of the bullpen for the Royals. 
Ingle makes his 54th appearance of the year. He's won five, lost five. He's saved new games. His third run average 2.35 in 84 innings. Of work. So Doug Bird is gone, and Birdie can't possibly be the winner now. He can only be the loser. But the Royals can come back to win it and get him off the hook.
the board with good speed. We'll see how the Royals play it now. Steve Ryan now playing center field for the Minnesota Twins to replace Lyman Bostock. Lyman Bostock apparently tore the ligaments in his left thumb. So Steve Ryan playing center field. Here's John Watson. He scored the Royals first run. Safe on a fielder's choice. He's fly to right. Allen has stolen 23 bases this year. The pitch wasn't much. A good one in front of the plate. Wagner's only play to first. So does Watson, but the runner is second now, Al Cowan. A sacrifice. The play going 2-4. And the tying run in scoring position now for Fred Potek. And out comes Fred manager Gene Locke. That may do it for gold. Weininger headed for the mound. The shortstop. Roy Smalley coming in. Locke is talking to his right-hander, Dave Gold. He has not signaled the bullpen yet. And he's going to stay with Gold, apparently. Grounded out to the pitcher. Cowan's a single, Wampin a sacrifice, and the tying run is out there. Weininger still at the mound talking to Dave Gold, his pitcher. from Weininger the stretch. The pitch. Hotek takes a strike, strike one. Crediting 244 with 43 runs batted in. Gold's taking a look at Al Callens who has a good lead at second. Now he's ready. Here comes the stretch, the pitch to Hotek. The butt and took a strike. He's in the hole. Strike two. It didn't like the call. But the plate umpire Jim McGee. Al Cowan with great speed carries the tying run. Bobtek in the hole. Go. Getting signed. Here's the stretch for the right hander of the pitch. Nobody on his 17th. Texas and Chicago are tied 4-4. Four, four. Red Pontek waiting now. Gold walking behind the mound to run down the baseball. Oh, yeah. Gold's back on the mound. Pontek back in the batter spot. One to the count. Clutch by the right-hander of the pitch. Ground ball, jump foul. Chuck Hiller, the Royals' third base coach, barehanded. <laughs> the outfield straight away against Fontaine. Getting ready again as the sign for Butch Weininger. Here's the stretch. The pitch. Struck him out. There are two men out. Montek down swinging. The first strike out of the game for Dave Cole. And we're going to have a pitch hitter for Frank White. Out comes Cookie Raw. Two times from the plate as the pick 
Tom Boquette now. Second like wild pitch of the game, charged the goal. The stretch, the pitch to Boquette. Strike and it's two and one. Boquette taking all the way. Tom has raised his average to 305 with two for three here tonight. And a big run at third base now with two out of the seven. The Royals now fighting to regain the lead after tying it. Gold puts the Whitinger. Right hander to the stretch. Two one to Boquette. Ball high and a three and one. Left fielder Larry Heisel. Center fielder Steve Fry extremely shallow. Boy, if Boquette can point the gap in left center, and he's a good off the field hitter. He can run for a while, but three one pitch. And a full count three and two. The lead run just 90 feet away. Boquette trying to get him home as Ray Otis to the place in the seventh. Three balls, two strikes, and goal. Leading signs from Weininger. Here is the stretch and the pitch. Ball four, he walked it. Here comes Otis. The second walk issued by Boquette. Now comes Dean Moss. That's going to do it for Dave Coles. He wants Johnson, the right-hander, to pitch to Amos Otis. So Dave Coles gave it a battle. He could not be the winner, he could only be the loser. Doug Bird is off the hook. And as Gold sets for the dugout, here's the situation. We're in the bottom of the seventh with two men out. The Royals with runners at first and third, a battle back to Dias. The score, Royals three, Twins three. Tom Johnson, a right-hander out of the Minnesota bullpen, making his 18th appearance of the year, and he's been tough. In 48 innings, he's given 43 hits, one three and lost one. Right-handed hitting Amos Otis in a 3-3 ball game with two out of the seven. And the Royals with runners at first and third. A two-out single by Cookie Rojas has tied the game. Johnson says he's ready. The right-hander backs off the mound to set himself. Back up on top, Otis steps in. The motors keeps the inning alive. And again, the great crowd starts to roar in Royal Stadium. Johnson to the stretch, the first six others. Outside, ball one. Bergmeyer, the left-hander, continues to He's been joined by a right-hander now in the Minnesota bullpen. Leading signs from Flick Weiger. The stretch, Flick Jonas. One and miss, and a count even one and one. Otis after a breaking pitch away. Otis out of the batter's box for a moment. Rojas at third, Boquette at first.
Swing and a miss and a count to even two balls, two strikes.
Larry Gautner, Butch Weiniger is the first man that Mark Littell will face. Third base is open, George Brett coming to the mound, so we'll see what the Royals do. If you want Butch Weiniger, it would load the bases, set up a force anywhere. And the Royals then could gamble on an inning-ending double play, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to walk Weiniger. On the other side of the coin, this puts more pressure on the pitcher, Mark Littell. With the bases loaded in a 3-3 game, there is no margin for error. So you are forcing Mark Littell to throw strikes. Larry Heisel would be coming up. Larry, an outfielder with power who will strike out. So really, it's your classic matchup, strikeout pitcher against the power hitter who will strike out. And there's Paul Porto Weidinger, and here comes Heisel. Larry Heisel has struck out twice. Both times against Doug Bird, he's singled and scored. So Larry, one out of three as he stands in. Three three ball games. The Twins about hit the Royals nine to eight. With one out here in the inning, Carew single, fly, double. And now the bases are loaded, one away. The Royals infield, the double play depth. And Mark Littell facing Larry Heisel. The windup, the pitch. High ball one. Rob Carew, the runner at third, always a threat to steal home. Fifteen times in his career, Rod Carew has stolen home. And Cookie Rojas to the mouth. And a good guess would be that one of the things that Cookie is talking to Mark Littell about, Rod Carew, also the fact that really there's no margin for error. You can't be cute now. You have to rear back and throw strikes and give them your best stuff and what happens, happens. So we'll see. One and oh, base is loaded. Here's the pitch. Dan Ford, right-hand batter, 
Too big to suit Campbell. He steps back off the rubber. Al with 21 stolen bases. But only one since the All-Star game because of the bad leg. He draws the throw in his back.
way to the mound to talk to Mark Littell.
Cardinals owner August Fuerza, the shocked and disappointed over the fine levied against his club by baseball commissioner Bowie Kuhn for tampering with Oakland A's players. George Burns is gunning for his first tournament victory on the U.S. Pro Golf Tour after zipping to a one-stroke lead at the halfway mark in a Sahara Invitational Golf Tournament being played in Las Vegas. Taking a look at some of the final scores in the American League, Boston 7, Baltimore 4, Texas lead Chicago 9-4 after seven innings of play, and it was Detroit over Milwaukee 5 to nothing. In the National League, Chicago 3, Montreal 1, Philadelphia 2, New York 1, Cincinnati 5, Atlanta 2, and Houston over San Francisco 5-4.
pointed at Eisner. 